Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Um, we're not in our loft, and we're not even in the same fucking building. This is <laughs> terrible, Dan. This is a, a new yeah. development. Yeah, but we're still we're still trying hard to to carry on um, smelling and bringing you um, videos of us smelling. Yeah, and actually, that's the one lucky thing about this whole situation is that although we're indoors, we still have internet, we still have phones, we still have laptops, we still have all our perfume. Yeah. Although I drank some of mine yesterday because I got a bit disappointed. <laughs> um, but it's fine. So, I mean, what are we talking about today? Is, is it sort of well, this is a our... new time of year, perhaps, that hasn't been noticed? <laughs> well, it's, it's our, I guess, you know, I think as we've started to do re like recently with our seasonal videos, rather than some people like to do them, you know, four weeks before the season started, whereas we've started doing them kind of almost retrospectively halfway through the season to talk about the fragrances that we've been wearing. <clears throat> um, and so yeah. this, this is a very different kind of, spring video this is our self-isolating spring <laughs> yeah i mean the, the i mean these fragrances are all things that normally we like we've said that we love our winter and our heavy frags mm. but actually i can't wait to be out in the sun wearing some of these things i mean i'm wearing them indoors but if i want to be outside in the spring so like i think our experiences of self-isolating spring are probably a bit different because but Joe lives slap bang in the in the center of London, pretty much. Whereas I I live a bit um, further out. I live about half an hour uh, by train outside of London. So actually, really, o over the last um, few weeks since I've been kind of self isolating, I've actually been out into the countryside a lot. Within about five minutes, I can kind of be in the middle of nowhere, and we've been going for lots of walks with yeah. my wife and son. And so I've spent a lot of time in the woods much more That's time so nice. than, uh, than normal. So I think my selection kind of reflects that a bit, whereas I guess your situation is a bit different. Yeah, my, my fragrances are more sort of indoors with aspirations to be outdoors. <laughs> um, I, guess, I guess some of these some of these are slightly off the beaten track, but yeah, they're definitely kind of, they're definitely quite trad spring style fragrances, at cool. the least. Well, should we get stuck in? So yeah. Yeah, do you want to go first? Shall I go first? What do you think? Sure. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go first. And the, you go first. The one I'm going to start with was a, a really, really easy choice because it's one I've been wearing a lot and it's one which I associate with these walks in the woods. It's just incredibly, incredibly green. It's Mousse Illuminé. I don't know how I can say oh. Mousse Illuminé uh, by Rogue. I mean, it's just the most green <laughs> fragrance ever. It's, it's just, great stuff. And spray on here. So I'm now, we're not on the organ, I'm now actually on my piano. So I'm now going to get my piano covered in fragrance, which is quite nice. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's an overdose of oak moss. Joe knows this. Yeah. Is Joe's good. So I know the, the sound Wonderful stuff. Is we can't be spraying and smelling at the same time, but I know Joe's uh, got this fragrance. And where is it? But if, if I can kind of waft it that way towards Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm getting it. Um, but yeah, it's just an overdose of green. So there's also some other. Um, green things I think there's some kind of wormwood and and a few other bits but it's just about this oak moss it, it just feels like you're walking through a green woody dense kind of kind of scene you can imagine uh, the moss yeah. growing on the, on the on the fallen trees and it's just amazing and there's a lovely there's a lovely brightness to it isn't there it's a it's a very happy sort of smell for me absolutely sort of earthy as well but it makes me smile every time I every time yeah. I wear it I don't know if that's the wormwood in it that kind of gives that kind of slight um, kind of bit kind of kind of bit, bit of brightness, like almost like absinthe kind of um, vibe. To yeah, it. it's great stuff, isn't it? And it feels wonderfully like wonderfully vintage, but also at the same time kind of modern because no one's doing it. Yeah, it's kind it's of like a drug. It is, yeah, it's a definite nod to the past, and it's it's an ifra defying, defying fragrance. So it's got more oak moss than you're supposed to have. So if you do buy it, do test it, you know, test it on a small bit of skin before you spray it straight into your eyeballs. But, yeah. but oh my, it's just the greenest. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. I love and it. also, I mean, this, this, this house has some great things as well. Sheep or cyan we talked about. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's a great fougere thing. Um, Is it fougere de l'aube? Dervish. Yeah, fougere de l'aube. Mm. Dervish. Uh, oh. And a few, I've, I've got a little sort of sample set of some of them. I've mm. not tried, but she presented tobacco there as well. Really good. Yeah. Great house. Great house. Moose Illuminate. That is my number one. Moose Illuminate. What is yours, Joe? So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with an old favorite, which I've not worn for ages, but 
which I actually really still love. And it's this little bad boy from <sighs> Aqua de Palma. Lovely. Just a barbershoppy, you know, Neroli Pettigrain. I'm not going to spread it because I haven't got any little cards, but oh, maybe it's right in there. It's really good. It's kind of, it's very traditional again, which I, which I like. You know, it's not something I reach for if I want something challenging mm. or hugely interesting, but it's a good soapy, I've just been sat in a barber's chair. Absolutely. But having a have, wet shave kind of scent. But it does have that, it's got, a, it's got that, really got that kind of classic DNA, but there is a bit of a kind of modern twist, isn't it? Because yeah. um, I've got the, the original Colonia as well, and obviously it shares all that DNA, but there's just something about it. Who's it? The, the sort of Pettigrain orange thing going on in here, yeah. I think, is what lifts it into another, who is it? Into is another it, realm. Is it Jean-Claude Elena or who? Um, no, that, the, that was Jean-Claude Elena and someone else did Assoluta, Colonia oh, Assoluta. Okay, yeah. This one I don't actually know, I'm ashamed to say. Yeah. But they've, I mean, they've really nailed it. I, sadly, this has been reformulated. As I remember when this came out in about 2010, 11, yeah. They had this beautiful soapy thing, and it still does have it, but yeah. not to the same, not to the same degree. And now it's more sort of sharp and citrus and, and sort of tart. Yeah. But it's really good, and you know, for a, for a nice spring day, it's got enough. It's got enough sort of citrus and and um, and freshness, but it's also got enough body. There's a slight sort of very gentle patchouli in the base. Yeah. Slightly woodsy, woodsy as well. So you know, it's got a bit more substance to it. You know, longevity, not not the longest in the world but it's an eau de cologne Just what do we expect fine, keep it fine yeah i mean remember, and it's cheap really relatively cheap yeah compared to some of the things here but I, yeah do you remember, i was with you when i bought my bottle of that and do you remember where we were yes absolutely in rome yeah but the, on the, the on very the same aqua de palma boutique at the bottom of the spanish steps in rome it's so cool yeah it was so cool and you know this it's like quintessential italian fragrance isn't it it's absolutely. It's kind of, you know, they're respecting their traditions. Like we found in Rome, you know, the guys would go around, you know, 60, 70 year old guys wearing really sharp suits, mm. cigars, you know, just class and style all the way. Yeah. And this thing has that. Yeah. Absolutely. Not controversial. It's not a groundbreaking thing, but it's really well done. Simple, nice, effective. Nice choice. I think so. Yeah. Right. Colonia Essenza. I think for, for, for my number two, I'm going to move um, from Italy. Uh, to France now. If if, if you any of you um, follow us on Instagram, I've been doing my top eleven Dareland fragrances. It's actually been uh, great, yeah, but yeah. so I've I've been kind of self isolating. I've actually been getting you know hitting the frags quite hard. And one of them, which is perfect for spring and it's just a masterpiece, is Après Londres. Oh, um, absolute masterpiece. And another reason why this is in this list is I was gobsmacked and really saddened to hear that this has been discontinued so a fragrance which is you know 100 just over 100 years old yeah it's crazy <sighs> it's, it's, it's heartbreaking so après l'onde means after the rain so this is a kind of it's a spring walk through a forest after the rainfall and it's just oh, it's beautiful magical stuff um, so it's it's all about the kind of blue florals kind of iris violet with a, a tiny bit of heliotrope but really at the beginning there's a lot of iris but unlike, um, it shares a lot of notes, similar notes to Le Bleu, which is also by Gaila. Mm. Whereas I found Le Bleu becomes more of an evening kind of heavy scent. This feels much more like a spring day scent. There's, there's a bit yeah. of aniseed in the, in, in, the, in the start. There's also some bergamot stuff, but the, I think it's the aniseed which gives it this energetic. Feel. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, it's curiously edible as well somehow. Yeah, I, I, get, I don't know, maybe that's the kind of the violet Violet yeah. as well, because I always get this kind of whenever, I, well, especially in Gelan, when I smell violet in some of these Gelan fragrances, I get this kind of Parma violet. So it makes me think of those fizzy sweet. They're almost kind of fizzy, those yeah. little chewy sweets, aren't they? But it's just if again I've, because I've been doing these these walks in the woods, we're not quite in bluebell season, but it. Um, but when you know, in a few kind of weeks, we'll be getting those bluebells on the kind of forest floors. And anyway, that feeling of of walking through flowers kind of early in the morning on the forest floor. Oh, perfect. It's kind of what I get from this. And it's so uplifting. And, oh. and it could, it could it done in the wrong hands, it could be a very melancholic sort of scent. But there's, there's, a, little, there's a little smile in it as well, isn't there? Oh, yeah. I, think, I mean, I think you're, you are... A little tear and a smile at the same time. I mean, you're absolutely right. There is a bit of a, 
um, you know, a melancholic feel, but I guess, but you're also right. I think you could take it either way. You could, you could, yeah. you know, if, if you're in the right mood, maybe you could just sit and, and, and you know, wallow when you're melancholy, enjoy that. But on, on another yeah. day, it feels really uplifting and bright and, and fizzy and energetic, but oh, it's just beautiful. And I, but after the rain sums it up perfectly, I think. Absolutely. It's, it's a real masterpiece. I, I hope that they change their mind about discontinuing that one. I it's, it's, think it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's sad, sad times. After a long day. Stock up. Stock yeah, up. I will be. Right, what is your number two? My number two is... It's a, it's a slightly, slightly interesting one. It's one I've mentioned before, but I've forgotten about. Low Fare from Penhaligans, which I, I just... I've put it away, and I've not worn it until now, you know, this last, last few days of spring. Like, well, the first few days of spring. Hmm. But it's just beautiful. Juniper fig this kind of milky fig i mean there's there's oak moss there's a little touch of ambergris so you get this salty sweet trail going on there's behind it sense as well isn't it? that kind of like fizzy energetic it's yeah kind of for, isn't it? it is yeah. yeah and i i love it i think it's one of his i think it's one of his his best things i mean i've not you can see i've not worn very much it's, it's pretty full ah. but it's really beautiful and it's it's got the sharpness that i love of, of, of juniper which i think is not done quite as well in juniper sling for instance yeah, which um, I also have, and I do enjoy. But this but is this like is another much, level. This is a much better fragrance than juniper. Yeah, I think, isn't it? Oh, and it's got the, you know that mossiness gives it a real barbershop, a, a real barbershop aspect as well. And you know, it's something I love in in a in a spring fragrance. It's something that has brightness, but also a bit of depth, a bit of body, Absolutely. a bit of something else going on. It's just uh, amazing. He's a marvel, Bertrand de Chauffeur. I was going to say it's this classic Bertrand de Chauffeur, isn't it? Totally. Yeah, I mean this. Timbuktu, Sartorial, they all have this like perfect balance between yeah. elements. You could yeah. easily do a, juniper, a sort of fresh junipery thing and that would be it. But the, you know, the mossiness, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure it's whatever oak, oak moss he's using is, is a sort of synthetic thing for Penhaligans, but it works, you know, it, it just gives it enough, enough sort of foresty, earthy quality. Mm. Ambergris, that's, it's salty sweet all the way through. It keeps sort of alternating between them. Um, Sandalwood as well. I mean, it's really beautiful. I've got to say, this is uh, this is one of the moments when I'm not enjoying this video because I really want to. I don't have a lot of. You want to get the smell? <laughs> I know. I yeah. Smell um, I'll spray it on the phone there. Uh, <laughs> no, um, but it's next time I see you, I'll bring it. It's it's really beautiful, and you know, I've I've poo pooed a Penhaligans recently because they, you know, they've done some weird stuff, and you know, they're I don't know, they're they're kind of hemorrhaging fragrances now. Well, they were bought, they some were of these guys were beautiful. Well, exactly, but these, uh, they've recently, well, not recently, I think it's about five or six years ago, isn't it? They were bought by Puig, which is this big international yeah. cosmetics company. And so, you know, the nature of it changes and, yeah, what can you do? That's it. But, I mean, this isn't a, an old classic. It's, you know, it's 2010, 11, 12 even. But it's, it's lovely stuff. And, it's, and it does feel like something you'd, you'd happily wear out on a, on a spring walk or something you'd wear to your office job mm. in the city. It's sharp. It's kind of powerful. Beautiful. Awesome. Right. From the Trade Roots collection, I meant to say. Yeah, so it's so meant to smell of all the, all the treasures you'd bring back yeah. um, on the ships. So there's tea as well. There's a really good smoked tea aspect, mm. you know, which I forgot, which is really, I mean, that's probably where the slight smoky yeah, saltiness yeah. comes from as well. Beautiful. Anyway, awesome. over to you. My number three. Um, so this is uh, from the house of, of Haeckel's. Ah. So we've talked about Haeckel's a lot. We've talked about Pegwell Bay. This is not Pegwell Good Bay. Stuff. This is Richborough. So um, these, are, these are fragrances which are all based on um, locations down in the southeast coast. So this is Richborough. And this is just got this amazing, really stunning mint. Now it's... Oh, nice. It's not, it, and I think, I mean, for me, this is my favourite mint fragrance. I mean, I really like uh, geranium pour monsieur, which is geranium with yeah. a lot of mint going on. But for me, this is just so green. It's so herbaceous. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I love about Pegwell Bay is that it's, it's kind of fresh and, and zingy, but it's completely herbaceous. And that's what I get with this. It doesn't smell toothpaste minty. It smells so green. And you can just imagine these lush oh. leaves all around you. And there's also the other thing in... I think, I think there's some chamomile in this. I was trying to think what gives you this slightly creamy um, roundness, and I think it's chamomile in here. 
Um, oh, I just love it. And, and there's also a kind of, there's a peppery aspect, which again, I don't know is the pepperiness of mint or it's a herbaceous pepperiness or just a bit of pepper, but there's something in it. Um, yeah, I've not smelled this for such a long time. Oh, it's, 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 oh, it's much, I mean, it's just, this is kind of real spring in a bottle. Completely uplifting. Yeah, love it, love it. Oh, masterpiece. I, rem I remember loving it, and I remember thinking at the time, um, of all of them, Pegwell Bay and this were my, were my favourites, when we smelt the entire, the entire collection. Absolutely. Amazing. And is there a sort of, is this the one that has a slight fairgroundy aspect? No, that, that's the which one, one was which that? Is, um, I can't remember, but that's the kind of rose one, the, the, the one whose name uh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreamland. That's Dreamland. Which Dreamland. Is the name of the <laughs> um, but this is, and you're, I mean, you're just instantly transported to this kind of countryside, wild, yeah. rugged kind of uh, herbs and growth. You're really kind of transported straight there. Like, so this is an aspect of spring, which I guess now is really sort of heightened for us, isn't it? Of the yeah. outdoors. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just about the weather changing. It's actually outdoors versus indoors. Yeah, and I think... green versus brown. Yeah, that's that's. I think gray. My, my my selection is really, you know, as I said at the beginning, it's really kind of um, reflected this kind of like the want for nature as opposed just for the want for something which is more uplifting. It's you know, I'm really yeah. Kind of... Anyway, that's my number three. What is your lovely stuff? Um, my number three is it's something I talked about before. Dodo. Oh, from nice. zoologist. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, I've, and I'll, I'll tell you now, it's not going to be in this video for two reasons. Green Irish Tweed is not in this video because A, I still love it, but there are other things I love more. Mm -hmm. And B, someone actually has my bottle. So <gasps> I can't even display it. <laughs> but having said that, I wouldn't be in here anyway because this for me now is a slightly more interesting aspect than the Green mm -hmm. Irish Tweed. Um, oh, it's just, it's, it's grown on me a huge amount ever mm. since I first ever since I first got it. It's got all of these big sort of fruity notes. I mean, the, the the list is enormous. I won't go through them all, but you've got fern, lime, lychee, raspberry, ambergris in the middle, fir, mm. uh, geranium, rose, base, amber, feathery, feathery musk, Standard. oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood. I mean, it's a, it's a big old selection of notes. But for me, the thing in the opening is this lime and lychee. It's so unusual, mm. um, and it's. It's not something you smell every day. And then you could easily think, oh, well, that's where the game, that's where the game ends. Mm. It's, it's a nice, bright sort of thing, but it has well, so much more. Well, that's what I remember. When we, when we <sighs> tried this, when it first came out, when we went into Bloom and tried it, and we both sprayed it in the shop, and we got this kind of fruity lychee vibe. And I guess we were smelling it amongst everything else, and we were only kind of getting this top note impression. And I was, yeah. you know, I think we were both kind of a bit underwhelmed by it. Yeah, but then, totally. But then, but then we went away, and we kind of texted each other later, after it, we'd let it kind of develop and come to life, we're like, wow, this is completely, there's so much more to this than we thought. That's it. Well, I mean, and the sandalwood in here is absolutely beautiful. When it, when it starts to go into that dry down, it's, it's like the creamiest and smokiest sandalwood I think I've ever tried. Uh, mm. Apart from maybe something like uh, Bois d'Azil by Chanel or something mm. like that, where it's our samsara, yeah. real great sandalwood things. Yeah. But in there, it's absolutely beautiful. And it keeps playing as well. It yeah. keeps alternating between this kind of fruity lime sharp opening yeah. and something underneath. And sometimes I don't get any top at all and it goes straight to the middle and the base. And I think that's just how my nose is behaving. Maybe I've got coronavirus, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but today when I smell that, I, I, I mean, obviously I'm just getting the top off the bottle, yeah. but it's so beautiful Amazing. and weird, like sort of furry as well. Yeah, it, it it's animalic without sort of letting you know how it's animalic. Well, that's the hurry, whatever it was, the, the furry, Pigeon bum, the furry musk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Furry musk. yeah. The pigeon's anus. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really clever to make something that on the on the face of it is a fresh, clean, again a fougere style fragrance, yeah. but that has animalic that you can't define. Like in Kuros or L by Arquiste, which are kind yeah. of as the twins, you can smell it's just it's a sort of pissy musk. Yeah. In this, you can't really identify it. It's it's a kind of a furriness. Yeah. And you know, Zalame and was well, not Zalame, uh, Bengal Rouge by Papillon as well, has the same thing. It's a sort of totally animalic that you can't, yeah. quite, you can't quite place it, but you know yeah. it's there, you feel it. Yeah. So it's very clever. Joseph Delap, I think, is the guy yeah, behind yeah. this. Rising Phoenix. I, like, I want to smell more. Rising Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. 
So I want to smell more of his stuff. I love this and the whole presentation as well. So yeah, that's my number three. Amazing, right? I think my number four. Now this is maybe a bit of a of a surprising one, um, and one that I've. I'm just going to say what it is. It is Tarbouche Afandi by Ah oh, yeah. Video. Now this this is a, is a brand which I when I went I went to Beirut about a year and a half ago and I I, I went to see if there were any like perfume shops nearby and there was one basically next door. So anyway, I, I ended up buying this one. So. Um, it, this may seem like initially a funny one for spring, but a tabouche is what we also in this country call a fez, um, and I think uh, an afandi is is kind of a like a, a term for you know, like your lordship kind of thing. So it basically means like lord with with a hat. So anyway, this is an amazing, amazing fragrance journey. But the, the reason I've been enjoying it in the spring is this violet leaf. So ah yeah, it, oh, this is a really really great. It starts with violet leaf and kind of uh, tangerine-y. Uh, yeah, I think it's in this kind of mandarin-y, tangerine-y peel more, um, than, more than orange. But really lush, kind of oh, beautiful. Uh, vivid violet leaf. And then over the course of this, you're just taking on this amazing journey of it takes you to kind of towards some kind of resins and some a tiny hint of kind of animatic note and then it and then after a while you realize it's a tobacco fragrance a kind of tobacco leaf fragrance which is a main oh. journey to go on but it starts off springy violet leaf so, and, I, and i really when i first spray it that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking forest floor oh sorry you're back <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm back. thinking i'm thinking i'm really thinking about this um garden maybe not forest so much but yeah more kind of garden with flowers blooming that's where i start and yeah it's, it's great in this in the spring you know you were just talking about dodo and the kind of where it takes you with the woods and the animalics it's great to be taken somewhere so you're starting off in the garden but then you're taking yeah somewhere else smoking tobacco at night with the warm resin becoming a bit sexy and oh beautiful i know i've never smelled this have you not smelled it at all i don't think so oh I, I may, I may have done, but I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not. I've way. smelled London to Mumbai. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a great one, but oh, which I really so, like. I've never, I don't think I've ever smelled that. It's almost a kind of a gerland like development, you know, that it, it it's yeah, got this, this, this real kind of, um, I, I feel this, this, it's got this kind of floral complexity going on in the kind of mid to bottom of this, where it, it's not too shouty or obvious. There's just these mm. things kind of, kind of flittering around. Um, I'm sorry you can't smell this. I could put the. T- I know. I really want to. <laughs> next time I see you, bring that because I I'm desperate to try that. I saw them on sale in um, Rudia White not so long ago, and I was I was looking at the notes list and thinking I really like the look of that. I want to try it. It's lovely stuff. So that one is Carbouche Afandi by Idiot. It's my number four. What nice, nice, show? nice. Um, I've got a couple of I've got a couple of options here, but I think one of them is going to be an honorary mention because I've not worn it enough. But my number two is Jiki. Oh. I had to have a Guerlain in there. Um, and I, I mean, I really think this works beautifully in spring. It's, it's bright, it's, it's uplifting, but it's got enough animalic funk underneath to make it interesting, which is yeah. what I've been going for. Oh, I mean, it's so, it's so kind of pissy and civity as well. <laughs> I love it, I really love it. Um, the first ever fragrance of modern perfumery, I guess, or oh, well, I think it's, it's Hasuna it's, Hana. They kind of say it's, well, it's the first one because it uses cumarin, which is a kind of a, a synthetic isolate. But yeah, um, I think, but yeah, oh. synthetics have been used since whenever, what's that, 1889? 1889, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is a vintage bottle. So this is the EDP and this is from the 80s. Mm. Amazing. And it's still, it's still in great shape. Yeah. I mean, you maybe lose a little bit of the brightness of the top. But it's it's just rich and opulent, but it's, just, it's kind of very smiling and fresh at the same time. It's so it's amazing. Yeah, it's got this. You know, it's essentially, it's a lavender fragrance. It's, it's quite yeah. simple. It's basically lavender. With it's very simple. And some animalics, but it's just. It's so yeah. I mean, how it's... how he does that is a mystery to me because it should it should smell really quite plain, and yet it's got so many layers. I think. I don't know if this has the real animalic musks that it had back in the day. It'll have some version of it that the 80s yeah. were allowed to use. Um, but the lavender, the, the, the vanilla as well, just mm. gives it a feeling of texture underneath. It gives it a bit of creaminess. 
like putting a bit of nice cream into a, a soup. Yeah. You know, you're still getting the flavor and the freshness of the soup, but the texture has changed that it sits in. Yeah. And I think that's what I love about it. And it, I mean, it feels perfect for spring, but also I would happily wear that in summer, autumn, winter, yeah. without any, any problems at all. It's just, it smells really beautiful. I mean, and depending on what mood you're in, you can adjust the quantity. Sometimes a couple of spritzes is enough. Sometimes you want four or five and to have this cloud of civet around you. Absolutely. It's one, you know, which is you really, really can, great. Like, I, I, wore, I wear it in a hot day in the summer it, and, it, and the lavender feels refreshing. Whereas if you wear it in the middle of winter, the kind of vanilla feels really comforting. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect fragrance. I think I would, I would happily class that along with Apre Londe as one of the great masterpieces of yeah. the of the well i was gonna say the 20th century not even the 20th century, the 19th century. Of, of all time in yeah. perfume yeah so yeah. jicky and the, yeah. you know the modern stuff is still good but if you yeah. get something slightly older that's in good condition which yeah. is always hard it's a gamble go for it yeah i would say right my number five is something completely different <laughs> so sauvage <laughs> no <laughs> very different so it is an atar so it is ah. malifluence and it's called Beyond the Hills 2. So uh, Malifluence is a, a, a kind of a UK, uh, British-based um, perfumer. And it's someone I've, I've been, I mean, I'm just starting to get into a task. And I've, this is one which it sounded so interesting on the notes list. It's what's it inspired by? Zagorsk, which is one of the combination oh, yeah. incense fragrances. So he wanted to make basically a more natural, improved version of that. And oh, this, okay. I'm going to put a little dab on because this this is me. I'm going back to the woods here. I'm going back to the kind of the forest floor. This is you. You haven't smelled this, but you're going to absolutely love this. If you can take affinescence, did you say? No. What? Mellifluence. 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 Sorry. If you can take um, the best bits of Cape heartache, minus the strawberry, mm. all of the best bits of Cape heartache, plus um, the kind of the best bits of Arso. Add, add some incense and a bit more sparkle. This is kind of what, you, what you've got here. Or oh, it's, it's. Oh, wow. I've got to try that. I mean, it's wow, wow, wow. It's just, I mean, Zagorsk, I mean, I really like that incense series from Comte des Garçons, but this, in terms of quality, this is completely surpassed. You know, the materials in here are obviously absolutely amazing. And it's just, it's so, I mean, it's kind of about, uh, th th there's lots of pine. And I think there's maybe even some kind of, juniper in this or something but there's you get this there's also some birch so you're getting that slightly burnt wood quality as well yeah but the way the frankincense combines with it it makes it so bright and energetic and uplifting and it's it feels like bright buzzing energetic green which i think is why it's so good for the spring and yeah but then later on as well there are a few there's this is where it differs to the other fragrances I've listed. There is some oud in there as well. So it gives you this round, complex, woody base. So it's you're finishing off the walk in the woods by maybe some wood which has been lying there and it's starting to grow old and decay a little bit. And, mm. oh, oh, I'm desperate to smell that. Really, so really good. Mellifluence, yeah. where are they based? They're in the UK. Yeah, they're so. based in the UK. I think, I think it's in Newcastle he's based. Uh, but they're oh, well, the okay. shop. The other thing about this is it's unbelievable. So uh, this is just one mil, but you know this will get me I don't know fifty wearings or so, and this is only twenty quid. That's amazing. Um, um, he's doing some really interesting things. I follow him on Instagram, and they've got some interesting fragrances coming up, uh, coming up, and you just would not believe the quality of this. You know, this is yeah as good, you know, better than Perfume and Roma. God, fucking hell! Pardon my French. <laughs> um, I'm going to check them out. I'm going to have. I'm going to have a look. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something that you've really you've sort of inspired me to do is to look at atars. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I still don't have any, but I've, I'm not scared of them anymore. Like I, like I was. Well, I was for ages. You know, with houses like Sultan Passion, where people said, you know, you need to try it, and I was like, oh, but I want to spray it. I want to spray it, and I, I do, I do still prefer a spray. I love the feel of getting it on your clothes and it wafting around, and you don't get the kind of same amount of sillage I don't think from, from, from an atar but in terms of just self-indulgence which is you know when we're self-isolating self-indulgence you know, you've got to give yourself a bit of a kind of pleasure atars and biscuits yeah. that's that's what I'm doing yeah absolutely right what is your number five excellent choice my number five is or my number one depending on which yeah. way around is something Dan and I both have 
Mem. Oh. It's from Bogoy. Oh. I love it. I mean, it's, we've spoken about this before, I know, and I, I don't make any apologies. This is, um, it's just all the lavender you can throw at it, plus sort of animalic chaos underneath. That's sort of wonderfully, not chaos is the wrong word, but it's, it creeps up on you, and sometimes it doesn't creep up on you. Um, now, the only slight thing is that it sometimes leaks a little bit there at the top. But, oh, yeah, my I God. It's, it's affected the collar a little bit on mine. I yeah, it's kind of, it's a bit sticky in there. And mm. um, if you can see the top, it's actually kind of, yeah, it's going, it looks like rust, but it's not. It's just sort of mm. solidified mm. fecal poop. Um, <laughs> but it's so beautiful. I mean, it's, it's got this amazing combination of, I think, five lavenders yeah. in the top. So, you know, aged, dying lavender, fresh, kind of freshly picked lavender, um, probably done through slightly different processes as well. Yeah. And sometimes that's what I get. I get a really big, fresh, masculine lavender. And then other times the lavender sort of disperses quite quickly and it, it becomes a sort of big animalic with a, you know, a slightly sort of fecal aspect and a huge amount of other, other sort of florals. And I think it's, there's, probably, there's probably some really good sandalwood in there. I'm, I've, I've not broken it all down, but my God. It's, but it's, for me, it's the epitome of what I like in the spring is the the best of both it is i think yeah i just i mean i'm just going to agree with everything you just said but it's i mean you're absolutely right it's just, and what is good about it is just it some days it just does different things on me you yeah know, some, sometimes sometimes i almost get this slight hay vibe which i guess is maybe you know kind of a, a segue from from the lavender but then other days i find it incredibly animalic but not all yeah. the time i don't know if it's the way it works in my skin chemistry or the weather but it's such oh, it's, it's an interesting one it's just a perfume lover's perfume. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it, and I, I have to say, I, well, the first time I wore this, or, you know, in fact, several times since, I thought to myself, oh, it's being a bit filthy today. I don't mind. But other people might think it smells a bit fecal. I had a lot of compliments. A lot of people said, wow, what is that you're wearing? That's really yeah. good. I really like it. So, I mean, it's, it's a kind of a shape shifter, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, amazing house. And, you know, my... Yeah. Um, there's that um, O1 or whatever it's called. I can't even remember. OE, the name. OE, yeah, yeah. OE, Dollar, Dula, you've got, Dula, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. T Rex yeah. is a different house, obviously, but, but same perfumer. Go Dani. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, genius. It's just whatever he's doing, I'm always going to keep my kind of eyes open. Yeah. Open. Oh, God, absolutely. Amazing. And it's, I mean, the, the sort of the performance on this. I know performance isn't the most important thing, but this is a whole day's journey as well, like a lot of the great Gerlands you put that on and just you've got a whole day of changes and you keep going back and every hour it's doing something different. Yeah. And sometimes it'll just sit for six hours and another time it'll just, it'll go nuts. I don't know. It's very live and volatile somehow. Amazing. I love it. Amazing. So I think what's quite interesting is, I mean, I guess this spring is a bit of an unusual one and this is our first self isolating, isolating spring. Hopefully, Hopefully I'll last. Be, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll last. But, um, yeah, and I guess spring is quite an interesting season that it can be about like hot, hot, sunny days or it can be about like dark, woody walks. And um, yeah, these are things yeah. which kind of reflect it. So let us know what you are wearing for spring. Yeah. And make sure you're enjoying your perfumes when you're stuck at home because yeah. I don't know about you, Dan, but I'm always out and about smelling things and I'm always looking online at oh, what's the next thing I'm going to get. And I get the thrill of the chase. Yeah. And I sometimes forget to enjoy the stuff I have already. And I've been doing that more recently because I'm, I have to. Yeah, loads. I can't walk around the shops and go, oh, I'll have the spritz of this. And Absolutely. And also, you know, we've been, you know, we've both chosen a Guerlain fragrance that both of us have owned for, for ages. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's the sort of, it's the appreciation of what we've got that then inspires us to look at other things as well, I think. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm going to look for other things that are in a similar ballpark to Jiki or Mem, or Aqua de Palma. They're, yeah. they're my kind of references that I have, and I'm going to see yeah. what else is out there. Yeah, absolutely. So but even yeah. if you're at home, on your own, self-isolating, keep on sniffing. Yeah. And until next time, happy sniffing. Bye.